of you what it's like to be a citizen of Ghana. Uh, so briefly, I want to share with you what it's like to be a citizen after being here 29 years without citizenship, okay? I was here since 1990 as a resident of Ghana, meaning that I had a residence permit. Uh, when I came to Ghana, Ghana was ruled by a dictator. It was under, it wasn't so-called democracy, it was like uh, military rule. So during military rule, Ghana was evolving so that the doors could open. So I actually seen Ghana make the transition from military rule to democracy, which is an experiment, and then we're going on into what we call the kingdom of heaven, where there will be heaven on earth, where we will enjoy um, the millennium of peace, love, and happiness. Um, Ghana is a wonderful country. You can live here as a, as, a, as a person with residence permit. With residence permit, you can have a bank account, you can move around freely, you can buy land with residence permit, you can do a lot of things with residence permit. However, if your residence permit expires and you got some money sent it to you through the bank, they won't give it to you, okay? Because they want to check to make sure that your paper is always in order. And that can be a hassle, okay? That can be a hassle. Then um, you have, um, um, like in my experience, I had, um, I bought properties and I invested in Ghana. And I had a, uh, a person that took advantage of me because I wasn't a Ghanaian citizen. They wanted to steal some of my property. True story, so they reported me to Ghana Immigration. So I was called to Ghana Immigration and they asked me some questions. So I had to get a lawyer to explain to them that this is um, uh, a thief, um, a process of trying to steal some of my property. And I have 50 acres in the central region. I have properties in Kaswa. I've invested when I came to Africa, I invested. So uh, quite naturally, the person lost, okay? The Ghana government, immigration looked at the situation and said, well, David is not guilty of this, so we cannot deport him. Um, so they actually continue to allow me to stay in Ghana. So now, thanks to Dr. Milana and, Dr. and the presidents of Ghana, I never have to worry about that again, okay? It's a great feeling right. to know that you don't have to be deported. No one can ever deport me from Ghana anymore. Okay. You see, I was just in the Volta region two days ago, and they, they have tight security over there because of the, um, the, you know, you're coming in from West Africa, you're coming in from Nigeria, Benin, so they're watching everybody. Uh, so in the car that I was in, they asked a couple of people to get down. You know, immigration was there. You had the police and the soldiers checking. That's in a place called Sokokobi. They, the paperwork was in order. The person had a, you know, so-called foreign passport, but I didn't have to worry. I had my voter's ID. You see, I don't take my passport everywhere. So I have a passport, you know, I have dual citizenship. Uh, that's what the Jews in New York have been having for years. A Jew in New York can go to Israel any day with a red passport, and when you go back to America, you use the blue passport. So these are just some of the benefits that you have. Of course, you don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about paying a, a million dollars to do business here. I can actually now get residence permit under my company for someone that needs residence permit. But the most importantly is that you need citizenship. And the doors of Ghana has opened. Um, the president that gave, that, that knew Dr. Milana, and it's good to be known by the president. The president said to Ghana, to the people that gave, that he gave citizenship in 2016, that this is your right, and he will get into that. So citizenship is your right, because you didn't lose your citizenship when you was taken out of here by force. So in essence, um, I would admonish you to sign up for your citizenship, okay? Um, the, there's some basic fees, but it's nothing like what countries cost charge you to get citizenship. Some countries will charge you $10,000. If you got $10,000, certain countries will give you citizenship, okay? Even America, if you got enough money, the American government will give you citizenship. You're, gonna, you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm saying, apply for this citizenship because I got mine in 2019 in the year of return. We're going to beyond the return. So I'm going to let the doctor do his thing, but I just want to give you that testimony, okay? I, 
live in Ghana for the last 30 some years. I love it. I have my family here. I'm here forever, but it's good to have citizenship. I witnessed that there were some that just moved to Ghana. One week, one year, few days, they got citizenship. Okay? So you don't have to wait like me 29 years. Okay? Because Ghana was evolving when I first came. And now Ghana has evolved, and you can be, as the president said, it's your right. I didn't say that. The president of Ghana said it is your right. So with that, I'd like to bring my brother, our friend, and the one that broke the ice and was able to get the citizenship going in Ghana for us. And he's got many people's citizenship. Dr. Ahmed Malana. Let's bring him up. I'm, I'm humbled, so thank you very much, Daddy. Uh, yes, a big applause to everybody here. Welcome to Ghana. Uh, I'm not going to uh, owe you too long, but uh, normally on a citizenship workshop, it normally takes about four hours to do it. But because of the nature of this group and the short time we're here, I really am going to give you a fast track. But what is important? Uh, this group, it, it's my understanding, you are coming looking for investment. It, am, I, am I correct? Are you coming to look to invest? Yes. So yes. You, you have to get things in order. Now let me, just, uh, if, let me just give you a brief overview so you will know where you are. You understand what I'm saying? Because uh, in order to know where you're going, you have to know where you have come from. And if you know where you've come from, you know where you are going, then you absolutely know where you are. Many of our people are suspended in animation and don't know. But what is very important about the Africans of the diaspora, and when I say Africans of the diaspora, there are about three different categories of Africans of the diaspora. But we're, we're talking about specifically descendants of the Atlantic slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. Never forget that if anybody talks to you about the diaspora. Because we have the African diaspora on the continent. And Europeans are trying to say that they are the that African diaspora. But they are leaving the continent and becoming diasporans because of economic reasons, because of political turmoil. We were taken from the continent against our will. We were kidnapped. Nobody ever asked us whether we wanted to go here or to Jamaica, America, etc. They just grabbed us. So therefore, we are the true Africans of the diaspora, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade. Now, you, you have to know that citizenship is extremely important. And, you, and I know I heard some of you talk a moment ago, you're, you're undecided yet, and maybe you have a perspective view that you got to give up everything and then become a citizen. No, you don't have to do that. I know just like I, I was born in America, just like you. I spent most of my life in America. I got family there. And so nobody can expect for you to uproot yourself and just leave like that. But I think it's high time that you need to come to grips with the reality. The reality, you need to do a reality check. Things are happening fast in the world. And we are being more marginalized and even at the point right now, on the verge of becoming extinct. If you don't believe that, you just stick around a little bit longer and you will see that the black race, in terms of our numbers, the black race is up, if you will, for removal off the chart. And there are so many different ways that they're trying to do it, and I won't waste your time to go into that. But as investors, and coming here to Africa. And when I say Africa, not only Ghana, but what I'm gonna say about Ghana can be germane to most of West Africa, and for that matter, even East Africa. But only with the exception. Ghana, Ghana stands out different. It stands out different due to the fact during the 400 years transatlantic slave trade, there were 66 slave ports that the Europeans had built from Senegal all the way down to Angola. Now I want you to keep this figure in mind. There were 66. And of the 66 slave ports, 46, 46 of the 66 were built in Ghana. 
and 26 of them are still standing today. So it simply means there was a lot of training of human beings going on in this area of the world and of the African continent. And the descendants of African descent in America, we have a close affinity, blood ties, to the region of West Africa, more so than East Africa, even though there was slave trade in East Africa. But we know of the recent four to 500 years, that all our descendants' DNA comes out of here. Now, having said that, you must understand that governments now have become independent African governments. And they see their lost children, or they have been looking at their lost children as really an economic package that they could feed upon. And mostly our people naively have been ignorant of the fact that we just spend, because for you to get an air ticket to come here and go back, it may take you two years to three years to save for that. I'm not saying all. But we've been just been coming, spending our money, giving it to the government. The government say, Aquaba, Aquaba, welcome, welcome. Then come, come. Then after your two weeks in the hotel, or a week in the hotel, bye bye, we'll see you next time. You get nothing. Absolutely nothing out of it. And I've been on the continent now almost 50 years. And I've been watching all of this. And I say, it's high time we do a reality check. It's high time that we get our due. We are not strangers. I see my auntie every day I walk through the streets here. I see my mama every day that I walk in certain areas of Accra. I see my brothers, I see my sisters. How can anyone even think that we are strangers, that we are not part of the African family? But in order for you to be a part of the African family, you gotta now start acting and start thinking. Because if there's one value that we have in Ghana, and for that matter, probably throughout West Africa. African people here on the continent are very spiritual. You do not have to open up your mouth and speak. They're able enough to discern when they see you, whether you really feel that you belong here or whether you are apologetic, that you don't speak the language, you don't know the culture. So really, I don't belong here, show me the way. No, you got all the right in the world to put your feet on the soil here and say, this is my land just as much as it is yours. I did not ask to leave from here. My mother's bloodline is still here. So you have to really demand and you have to have your orientation in your mind to feel that you belong. Now having said that, as business people, God knows I have seen a many Africans of the diaspora, particularly African Americans, come here thinking that they can invest their money because you know we need so much here. There are so many business opportunities. All you have to do is just look. It doesn't take a lot of money to actually build a business here. It doesn't take a lot of money for you to actually become a millionaire. Because one of the things that we got, and I want you to hear me on this, one of the things that the Africans of the diaspora got, we got a universal education that no institution, a scholarly class institution can give us. Our education, universal education that we got, is that we were put in the fire in the fire, the worst of the fires, and the evil of the fires. And we were able enough to survive and come out. We were able enough to come out with PhDs, able enough to come out with high government officials, able to come out and tell the man, as Jesus Christ said on the day that they were going to execute him. There was about five to six things the Romans asked him to testify, to know the end of the time. One of the things that he said, and I want you to know it because it applies to you right now, said that when the seasons change, when the dry season becomes the rainy season, the rainy season becomes the dry season, you will know that the hour is near. When babies begin to have babies, you will know that the hour is near. And he said, oh prophet, 
This is Barnabas, St. Barnabas. Oh, prophet, they said, tell us, when will the hour and when will he come? He said, when the slave rises up and takes the seat of the master's house and sit in the master's house, you will know it's all over. That has happened in America. It happened with Barack Obama. Whether he was with us or not is not important. But he fulfilled that. America is gone. You cannot say America. It's gone. And you should be preparing yourself right now to get out. Because at 1159, and you start saying, can I get a visa? It's too late. 1159, you're calling Delta Airways. Can I get a ticket to Ghana? What? <laughs> it's too late. The time is now. The time is now for you to plan for your children, if not for you. Yes. Plan for your grandchildren, if not for you. Save them. You must do that. And there's nothing stopping you from having dual citizenship. There's an agreement between the United States of America and Ghana for you to have dual citizenship. So you don't have to give up your comfort zone in America to go and get citizenship here. But however, you would have to get a residence here. It would be remiss of me to say, come, you can be sitting in Los Angeles with your comfort zone and say, oh, give me an application. I want to be a Ghanaian citizen. You can't do that. You can be sitting in your comfort zone in Arkansas, in California, in Toronto, Canada, wherever. But you have to come here. And when you come, come and open up a residence here. Even if you're not going to stay here, rent the residence after you leave and go back. You still got income coming. Because one of the requisites in order for you to be a citizen of this country, you must have a resident address. You must have a residence address. Now let me get to the most sensitive point of you as a business person. The most sensitive point of you as an investor. My God, sometimes what people do not, I don't know whether we're blindfolded. We don't think. I'm not saying that you're not thinking because a lot of that has to do with inexperience and innocence. But innocence is not a virtue when you're investing your money and you lose it. <laughs> Do you understand what yes. I'm saying? Yes. So how can you possibly think about coming to a country and investing in a country and you're not even a citizen of the country? You're not even legalized in the country. Because whether you know it or not, human beings are human beings and they have different natures of doing things. I'm going to give you an example. David, he touched on that briefly. But I'm saying this in light of the citizenship issue, which is extremely central and important for you to have. If you come and set up a business here, and your residence is in America, you come, you hook up with a Ghanaian, and you let them run the business for you. Now, you have to understand, what is the balance of security of you vis-a-vis -vis the Ghanaian? The first time there's a misunderstanding between you and that indigent, like that you said a moment ago, you can rest assured, your ticket is up. <laughs> your investment is up. Because you would do the same thing in America if a foreigner came to do business with you and you had a dispute with them, you wanted to deal with them, you would do what you felt you could do to try to get even with them. And this is a basic thing that you have to look at in developing countries. You have to look at that. So this is why I say, citizenship is the foundational basis for you to be secured and for you to have your comfort zone and to reach for that goal of making you some money and to be able to protect your money. 
Making money is one thing, but your ability to protect it and sustain it is a different thing. You understand what I'm saying? So now, Ghana, in Ghana, for the first time, and I want you to take note of this, where you are, for the first time in the history of any African nation, it was, it was Ghana. Ghana opened her doors. And let me tell you, Ghana opening her doors to Africans of the diaspora did not come through a process of osmosis. It didn't just come because you said, Abracadabra, open your doors. You have to understand, blackness on the African continent is not something that we see here as you see in the diaspora. I, I, I want to tell you, everything around you is black. All the way from the ants on the ground to the president of the nation. So what's so beautiful about you being black? Make it plain. What's so beautiful and powerful about you? You know, you hear brothers and sisters coming in, hey, hey, I'm, I'm happy to be here, Johnny, let me kiss the tarmac. Oh, black power. The African women is so, you know, it's due to the fact that everything here is black. Yes. So there's a deeper side that we look at. Be, beneath your blackness is your spirit. The African wants to see and feel your spirit. You understand what I'm saying? That is extremely important. So you see, with Ghana, Governments here have come and they have gone. Davi can bear witness to the fact that as early as the 1990s, we were petitioning government to give us citizenship. Yes. They wouldn't budge. That's right. Almost, <coughs> almost about 20 years mm -hmm. of pursuing the citizenship issue, the only thing that we got in 2000 was the right of a vote. And the right of a vote, if you don't know, in the immigration department, it just gives you a tidbit to come give you a, a stamp on your visa to say that you're all right. As long as you spend your money here, you're cool, you know, you're all right. Yes? Are you saying right of a vote? Yes. It'll be like house, a vote, housing, right to live here? Yeah, it, there is a law. We, uh, we pursued the right to return. Now let me define something for you so you can understand here. That there is a differentiation between the right of a vote, citizenship, and the right to return. The right, the citizenship simply means this. Any, any of you can go tomorrow. You can go down to the Ministry of the Interior, get you an application. They will give you the application for about 7,000 cities, non-refundable, non-refundable. And you can sign it, and on there it will ask you particulars about your bio. Can you speak fluently a Ghanaian language? A high the hell an African of the diaspora who's been snatched away from here for 500 years going to speak a Ghanaian. Badly. It's required. You don't know during the transatlantic slave trade, you would be killed by your master if they saw you and heard you speaking a dialect on the plantation. Some of you don't know your history. And this is why today there is a mental block in many of the Africans of the diaspora on their inability to blend in with the language immediately when they come. But Africans here, they can grab a language. They don't care where it's coming from. They can get this language without it. But we find it difficult because it goes back to the days of slavery. The master had an edict, a declaration. If you see anyone on the plantation speaking their mother tongue, off with the head. So we ended up losing the mother tongue and mostly mentally, menticide, losing the knowledge of self. But when you go to get your citizenship, as one standing in line 
with the Chinese, the Russians, the European, they, they're going to ask you. And of course, you don't qualify. You spent your 7,000 cities, it's karma. Then they're going to ask you. You must have been a resident in the country for 10 consecutive years without traveling in and out. Yes, that is to get citizenship. And you have to show evidence of that. Now keep it, I'm telling you. Now, the African American diaspora, just like Dadi said a moment ago, he was 29 years. One would say, why didn't you go get your citizenship? And you've been here 29 years. Well, it's, you can just see what I'm telling you right now. It is not as easy and simple as you would think. So many of the Africans of the diaspora and the thousands had come, got their visas, and they went underground, undocumented. But I can tell you this about Ghana, and do understand this, that Ghana has a compassionate heart when it comes to Africans of the diaspora, particularly African Americans. And I believe this relates to when Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was schooled in America and he used to go down into Harlem and drink wine with the brothers there. He used to do all the things. He brought that back in acculturated guidance about Africans of the diaspora. So I'm just saying, in a nutshell, you won't find government here. Never have I seen it searching out Africans of the diaspora to see if you're legally here or illegally here and boot you out. No. But there are protocols, international protocols, and you have to follow those protocols. Ghana's government is predicated on the immigration laws of Britain, and they are draconian. So to get citizenship, these are your requirements. Now, what is the difference in your right to return? as opposed to citizenship. Right to return means I was already a citizen of this land until John Hawkins came and snatched me, kidnapped me, threw me in the ship, and I landed in Jamaica, Texas, Florida, you know, etc. Now, after about 400 and some odd years in captivity, they say, we free. And the only thing my grandmother used to tell me, we free. Go back to your mother's country. Where is my mother's country? This was in my mind when I came from the ghettos of Chicago, when I came from the ghettos of Watts, California, when I went on to the University of USC and traveled. This was on my mind. How do we break this ice? And so, therefore, I said, boom! African governments have been getting away with, for years, they know what happened to us. They know what happened to us. And they're turning a blind eye as if they don't know it. And hiding behind the, the laws of Britain that, oh, you have to be, uh, to speak the language, and you have to pay this, and you have to be here a certain number of years. They know better than, they know what happened to us. So therefore, long story short, I said the only way we're gonna break this ice is we're gonna to have to put the African heads of state on the line. We're gonna to have to put the heads of states on the line and tell them who they are and what you have done. And so this is two, a two-tier. Now I want you to put this out. It's a two-tier approach for you to get your citizenship or right to return. And that is simply the first tier is moral. There is a moral obligation of African governments to give us our citizenship. Right. Predicated upon the 400 years of the transatlantic slave trade and us being kidnapped against our will, taken to a foreign land and spending 400 years in captivity. That's one. And I said, Mr. President, is that true? He said, yes. I said, look around you. Look up the coast. And you'll be going there, I'm sure, tomorrow, whenever. Go up the Cape Coast, the Queen Mother. They call it a castle. When has a slave dungeon become a castle? 
the queen mother of all the imprisoned areas where millions of our people went through there. Millions of our women were raped to death in those dungeons. Do you know that? Didn't even make it over to America. So I said, Mr. President, the evidence is here on the moral ground. Let's take the moral ground. I'm coming representing our people. We want to come home, but we want you to give us the preferential treatment that by the grace of God, you should do, do your duty. And he said, what is your second tier? <laughs> and I said, the second tier is, we got capital. <laughs> yeah, and we got skills. Yeah, we didn't survive under the white man just by playing patsy wassy doocy doocy. To survive under the most treacherous people in the world, you got to be the most skillful, most skillful and strategic of all human beings. All right. The evidence is showed by Geronimo and the Indians. They're gone. The evidence is shown by the other Aborigines. They're gone. But we survived. And therefore, we have a skill. We have knowledge. We know where this continent needs to go. We build America. Let nobody tell you that the black man and the black woman did not build the United States of America. We build America and we can build Africa and make Africa great again. Do you hear me? Yes. So he said economic, and I said yes. Give us our citizenship, we will bring economic added value to your national GNP, yes. your economy. Yes, yes, yes. We will be ambassadors as well on a third tier to promote Ghana tourism, to make Ghana the number one destination for Africans in the diaspora visiting Africa. Yes. He said, you've said enough. <laughs> you've said enough. Mm -hmm. My brother, just bring the paper. Write a narrative. Write me a narrative of what you just said verbatim. That's what I did. All right. I wrote the narrative. And that narrative enabled the president to sign. I went back our organization. And I'm not, I'm not trying to get brownie points by telling you this. David knows it. It's the fact. Our organization is the number one that actually broke the ice to get collectively Africans of the diaspora their citizenship. Yes. <laughs> then that government lost the election. Right. Here come a new government. Oh my God. What am I going to do? Do they understand? So to make a long story short, I had to go knock on the door, engage with them at the president's office, and say, I'm coming with a two-tier promotional package. But you know, you scratch our back, we will scratch yours. So my organization had to do a feasibility study. You see, these are things our people don't know. Right. Let me just fast track this, so I'll waste your time. We did an economic feasibility study with a cash flow projection predicated upon 12 months of dispensing capital by the Africans of the diaspora here in Ghana. And we did it. Meaning that those who are coming to Ghana, just like you in the, in the audience, I'm looking, I don't see any young faces. That means that those of you who are coming, I mean, I see young faces, don't get me wrong. Thank you. <laughs> I'm talking with her. My sister, I'm about your wife. I'm about your wife. Hey. I'm about your wife. Hey. I mean, young faces in the sense of being able to draw a picture. That's where I'm going with this. See, we got 80% of the African diaspora, African American population in Ghana that are over the age of 45 to 50. And they're on pensions. And they're receiving every month anywhere from a thousand plus to six thousand dollars a month. And that money is going to the economy of Ghana. Then the, then the age bracket, we had to do that. The income bracket, we had to do that. Then we went to look at Western Union. 
money ground, bank transfers, <laughs> wrote all that down. Uh, then, I mean, if you want the paper, I'll give you a copy of the paper so you have something to take home with you. We came up with the African of the diaspora in 2016 with an estimated population of 7,000, well, we know it's about 10,000 here, was spending $1.5 billion a year in the Ghana economy. Money talks, BS walks. I think you know that. Yes. And government looked at that. Then when you know it from what we did in 2016 and getting the right to return, the new government came in to say, oh, how sweet it is. You did the right of return. We are going to do the year of return. Oh. <laughs> you hear me? We gave birth to the year of return. Now it is so sweet. The year of return brought $2.2 billion to the economy. Hey man, this is money. This is big money. This is not short change. This is big money. Right. Now it was so good, they said we're going to beyond the return. That's what we're here. <laughs> yes, because they know that the African American diaspora got capital. And like the president said, you got skills. And we need that here in God. So brothers and sisters, having said that, I want to entreat you to come forward, get your applications in with our organization so that we can put you in line with the next batch, which we expect to go with in January of 2000, uh, 2021, to get your citizenship. Be in that number. We can also help you if you want to repatriate for you to get your resident permit. We specialize in helping you to do that as well. So we can make it, you have an easy landing here. And I must say, even above and beyond that, what we have been able to do, we have influenced here in Ghana our work, other African countries where now they want to follow the Ghana model. Right. Gambia, right. Senegal, right. Sierra Leone, Liberia. Liberia, Nigeria, and it's going to be more. So we are going to If you do nothing before you leave the planet, prepare the way for those who are coming after you. Yes. You've got to do that. If you prepare the way for those who are coming after you, the Lord will bless you with everything that you need now, yeah. right now. I'm telling you, our people got to understand that. And the best way for you to become yourself, and the best way for you to exuberate all of the essence of what you are as a lady, as a man, is right here on the African continent. Come to Africa, I am telling you. Come to Ghana. You will never, and we have never, been able to reach the heights of our capability of what we're capable of doing in the United States of America. I bear witness to that. I bear witness. I bear witness to that. There's always checks and balances. Yes. Right. There's always this and that. Right. But you will feel and you move amongst the people here the free flow of energy and rhythm. You see our women here going to the markets. You, you look at women in America, United States, they go to the market, they pick this. <laughs> women go here, they got tap on the head, baby on the back, hey, mama, head, blah, 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 blah. yes, with rhythm. In the flow of rhythm, meaning that we are God's people. God created us out of the rhythm of the universe out of the darkness of the universe. We are the light. Light comes out of darkness. We are the people. But you will never know you're the people until you become conscious. And I am telling you here today, my message to you today is that we have opened the door for you. And I'm asking of you if not for yourself, but for your children to come. Sign up 
take an application and start the process of either dual citizenship or total repatriation to come back home. We are welcoming you home. It is not a fictitious welcome. It is a genuine welcome. We are not fictitiously telling you to come back. We are telling you to come back so that you can be part and parcel, part and parcel of the African family. And this is what you need to do. As I said a moment ago, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your children and your children to come. Because let me ask you a question. Be quite honest with me. Be quite honest with me if I ask you this question. How many more years do you project that America can go on like she's been going on? Can anybody raise their hand and give me a, a projection? Yes, sir. This looks like it could be the final year, actually, based upon the trajectory that they're on and the collapsing economy. Morality has collapsed. I mean, everything collapsing simultaneously. And in addition to that, they have isolated themselves among the other European nations who are adversarial against them now. And the prophecy underscores it. You know, they, they are finished. This is the end, the conclusion of that particular nation. Can anyone else tell me what is your projection? Five years. You got five years. What will you say, my brother? A little later than November, sometime in the summer, June or July. You, you say what now? June or July of 2021. Woo! And my sister from Canada? I'm saying it's happening right now. Yes. It is happening right now. It's a chaos going on right now. It's going to be locked down again. So the question. Now, I, if, if we just be fair to each other, I don't know you other than what I've been told about you. But I ask you a very serious question, and I'm feeling the consensus of your reply. Each one of you has spelled out you don't have much confidence in where you're living. You could lose your job. <laughs> So the question you have to ask yourself, if this is the prognosis, then what is wrong with you? Why are you not? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, are you waiting on Jesus to come? Or Jesus come down and save us? Move us. Now, I'm not denying the will of Jesus. I'm not denying. But I think there is a fundamental proverb of what Jesus said. The Lord help those who help themselves. Now what, what do you intend to do if your prognosis is so low and you're not and you're not thinking about yourself, which you should not be. You should be thinking about your children and your grandchildren. Now what do you intend to do? You want to wait four years 364 days, those who said five years, and on the three, four years, 364 days, you say, Help. Can I get to Ghana Embassy, please? Uh, you say, Yes, yes. Uh, can, are you taking visas to, to Ghana? Delta Airways, are there any reserve seats on your flight that's flying to Accra, New York to Accra? And I mean, you're waiting four years, 364 days. You got skinheads in the streets trying to kill black people. You got people trying to poison you. You got things all around. Even white people are telling you it's eroding. It's out of control. So what are you going to do? And here we got in Mother Africa. And I want to tell you something if you don't know this, and I'm telling you the truth. This COVID-19, <laughs> we have minuscule. Minuscule, when I say minuscule, so low if it is really that, it's affecting our people. And I'll tell you why through the laws of physics if you don't know. But you can go to your Bible and open up Psalms 84.11. Open up your Bible to Psalms 84.11 and it will bear witness to what I'm about to tell you. That is the same. The planet Earth has an equator. And the equator bulges out 
farther in the universe than any other part of the earth. We are closer to the sun yes. in this region than right. any other part in the world. Right. And our melanation, the melanation is so deep here that melanin attracts sunlight. So we are being with more cosmic energy and the electromagnetic field of the sun in this region than anywhere in the world. And biological science says viruses cannot survive in an electromagnetic climate where the heat is intensive. It will not settle. A virus will put here, but in a matter of minutes, it's got to go. And this is why you don't find the COVID-19 killing our people here. Like they're dying like flies. Yeah. In America now, and it's going to get worse. They're dying like flies in Italy. It's going to get worse. And another factor, if you don't know, and I'm telling you right now, forget about this nonsense they're talking about COVID-19. It is God Almighty, if you believe in God, or if you believe in a creative force in the universe, the creator of this heaven and earth and everything in between, the creative force has decided to take out those who are polluting this planet. And that is a scourge. You have to understand how the laws of karma work. The laws of karma. People are prepared with jet aircraft. Oh, nobody can attack us. We got the latest jet plane. Oh, we got the nuclear bomb. How are they going to get us? <laughs> Do you know how God Almighty works? And it, it's, the Creator is working right now. He works through your genetic genome. I will kill your sperm and stop you from producing. And I will render you to zero population by 2040. You will be Kapuche, finished. This is what you're up against. And those people are not stupid. They may be violent. They say, if we're going to go, we're going to take as many of them with them as we are. Of and this is the mode that you're in right now. You're being taken out because they know their time is up. I'm telling you. Know it. I'm telling you. You, know you, you, you can just say that maybe I'm making congestion. You know uh, I mean, you, you go back. You remember what Milana is telling you. You ain't got that many of them. A number of years, you just said a moment ago, I asked you. And I think the highest number was five years. Uh, this man over here, Brother Tony, says a matter of months. So the fact of the matter, if you know, and I'm giving you this information, then I'm telling you here that you have a home. Mm -hmm. Why not try to start the process now right. instead of waiting mm -hmm. until 11.59? Right. Mm -hmm. Delta Airways, I have to please. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a recording. The recording says that all flights are booked. Uh, stay tuned. We will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Or well, maybe no flights are available. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So to do that, it's not an option. So ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on, but I think the the essence of my message that I'm here and doing a fast track workshop to tell you that this organization, the Ministry of the Future, our organization is the foremost organization that has gotten over 200 Africans of the diaspora their Ghanaian citizenship. And that Ghanaian citizenship was granted as your right to return. And it was based on the narrative, as I just told you a moment ago, that we presented to the government. So I will say to you, you be uh, the master of your choice, I've given you a brief overview, and I don't have to tell you, coming from America, you're in the land of communications, you know about a lot of things going on. We get it late here, but I think what is central to all of us that we do know that we cannot do business as usual. That there is a clock. Tick, 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 and you have to make a decision. So I ask you to come forward. I'm going to close my presentation right now, and I will open up the floor to you for questions and answers. Right. 
and may God bless you. I thank you for your attentiveness. So I'll open up the floor and thank you again. Thank you.